Welcome, everybody. Look who we have here. You may recognize him as Zach Hammond from Dead Space 2023. Anthony Alabi, how are you, mate? Great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. And I'm uh, I'm always excited to talk about Dead Space. It's, it was such a fun project. And I'm, I'm pumped that we're here and, and we're going to hang out for a little bit. Man, you must be pumped because you've been working on this for, for quite a while now, I'm guessing. Mm. Back in the in the COVID days, I would have said. Oh, yeah. Be, yeah 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 yeah. it's been it's been a while i mean we we obviously with covid and everything else it was like pausing and then coming back and testing and all of that stuff but i mean we i'm really proud more so of this project for the fact that we we kind of did it through all that and and like we we still were able to put out such an awesome game uh despite you know all of the roadblocks with with personnel and 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 covid and just like just along with the other complexities of making such an epic kind of uh video game and how did you approach this one because i know you know a lot of people might know you from family reunion which is a great show my girlfriend absolutely loves you in that as do awesome. i she uh, has great but, taste <laughs> <laughs> but i mean this is a different tra- you know bit of a different sort of uh project for you because i know you've worked mm-hmm. on maybe one or two games before but this is full-on motion capture performance capture you're pretty much a lead here besides gonna write tell mm-hmm. us uh how did you find the whole sort of process mate? so uh you know I, i've been working on tv and film and that's you know as an actor that's kind of where you're at that's your bread and butter and you and you really don't work on anything else except for kind of early in your career you work on commercials and You know, SBV, um, I had my agents there and I got into the voiceover kind of department and started kind of working on that. And this project was brought to me and they said, listen, you know, this is untitled. It was, you know, it was codenamed and everything. So I didn't know what it was. And uh, they just had uh, this leader. And I think the sides were like completely different. It was like something else. Um, Okay. And I auditioned for it and I thought it went well. I wasn't expecting anything because I wasn't in this space much. You know, I'm, I was like, I'm sure they have their usual suspects. They're just kind of, I'm just another body. Um, and then we got a callback. And then we, we you know, uh, kind of worked with the director and, and did all that. And then it just kind of like kept going from there until the point where they were just like, hey, you got casted. And I was like, cool, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't even know what this is. And then finally, you know, it wasn't even, I, I think I went out for my face scan because I knew it was going to be a game and we, you know, we did all the paperwork and I knew that it was a video game. I knew there was going to be some motion capture work and I knew that there was going to be like um, some days involved with rehearsals and stuff, but I didn't really understand the scope of like this game. I was just like, Oh, it'll be a little project. I work on it for like a couple of weeks and then move on to the next one. And uh, (laughs) years later, no. Um, (laughs) And so, and so we, we did the facial scan stuff, which was such an intense process. You know, you, we sat there and and it was, I think I had posted pictures on Instagram, but it's basically like a a dome that has like a thousand cameras, like DSLRs all around it. And you sit in the middle of this thing and you're, you know, it's like you're in the Staples Center, you're just lit up and (laughs) And there's a camera in your face, and basically what happens is you work with a coach right beforehand. You go over something like, I don't know, like 80 different facial micro expressions, and you have to kind of like it's a slight smirk or like a or like little things that you do with your face. And we work on those, and then they're numbered, and so then they just kind of call out those numbers and remind you, and you have to do that face, and then everything goes black, and it's a huge flash, and they're like, "Don't blink," and I'm like, "Uh, oh, all right, guys, uh, all right." So blinded i I now have about 30 percent less sight but the game looks awesome uh but no and and it was then that i finally found out what the game was because the team was was kind of watching the whole thing and at the end they were like hey anthony thank you and they're like by the way do you know like all about the game and i was like i I have no idea and they were like oh we're we're redoing dead space and i go excuse me because i know this game i'm a gamer so i was like no one no one you might as well said halo like you never no one said this to me like we're doing dead space and i go like real dead space or is this like a knockoff or like a you know like a spinoff or something and they're like no it's dead space and i was like okay okay and so i got really pumped i called my agent and they were just like yeah they they just told us and uh so you're in for it for a little while like this thing's gonna go for a minute so i was like all right and so we did that and that's kind of what happened it was months and months of scheduling and rehearsing and going back and forth and rewriting scripts and voiceover in the booth and motion capture days and all kinds of stuff 
And when you say rewriting scripts, is it just little things or were these big sort of plot devices? Because the game does, it, it stays to the sort of essence of the original, but also strays a little bit in, in pretty cool ways for me anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know that for the team, the biggest thing was they wanted to be sure that they kept kind of that original essence of the game and what, what brought people to the game of Dead Space. But I think they wanted to modernize it. And I think they wanted to kind of free up some of the parts that seemed very stilted or very um, rigid in implementation during the game. They wanted to, that's why they brought up like the comm screens and like we have those things now, we like the, the screen and to kind of make the characters more mobile instead of having to kind of always find a station or like be, you know, you know, just locked down to actual reality. I think they modernized the tech a little bit. They kind of freed it up to give the characters a little more freedom in moving around in that world and to give them a little more life. Does anything from your NFL career transfer over into performance capture? I'm curious. Anything help you um, from that world to this? Tight pants, <laughs> I think. <laughs> no, uh, no, no, no. Uh, no, it was, it, it's... Um, the the biggest thing is is the team factor and i think yeah. um you know being in the nfl they always talk about since you start football doing your 111th doing your your small part your small part of the big machine and realizing how important that is no matter how small you think it is it's all important to the grand kind of whole and i think i brought that mentality to this because i realized that even though hammond is a significant character there are other things that come into play that you're not a part of but maybe you're in the background or maybe like it it, it like kind of is a wink to something that happens later in the storyline all of those things really help to kind of one check your ego right and two it helps to kind of push your work ethic because you know you're working towards something with a team of people and i think that is kind of what the parallels that i found with football and with this is the team aspect of having my team of actors that we worked with having the team from ea motive and and just and just like everybody working together to kind of do the thing and really and it was a real collaboration i mean there were times where we'd film a scene four or five times and then darrow would, would come out our director and he and he'd go you know i liked it but it just there's something missing and they and they'd go huddle with the team for like 10 minutes come back to us and then they'd meet with us and present the new idea and we'd say yeah that'd be great but what if i did this and, and they were always open to that and i really appreciated that part it was that they were open to the actor saying I can't justify that in my character because of X. And so I mm. need him to do this. And they're like, okay, let's do that. And then from there we'd brainstorm and we were able to kind of come up with something that was special and fun and kind of satisfied everybody, but still had what gamers wanted. Well, that's a sign of a good director, isn't it? Someone that's... It is. He was the best. Oh, he was yeah. the best. Yeah. yeah. So tell me a legacy character like this that is so sort of beloved how do you approach it? Do you look at the the work that's been put before? Do you stay away from it going into this? How do you make it your own? Because, I mean, you did a really great job, by the way. Thanks, man. But, I appreciate it. That's great to hear. <laughs> <laughs> but it's I, tough. I, yeah, I'm, it is tough. It really is tough doing a character like this. So how did you approach it? I'm curious. Well, I, I kind of took the lead from EA on this one. When they... Uh, talked about the game and how they wanted to stay true to the original, but they wanted to modernize it. They wanted to breathe some fresh air into it. Initially as an actor, my gut instinct was like, okay, I don't want to see anything that has to do with Hammond. I just want to kind of make this character my own. And I think that's all fun and games until like the night before you have to go and like rehearse and put it up in front of everybody. And then I was like, okay, Google uh, Hammond. And, you know, and just kind of like going in, just to make sure that I'm not super far off. Yeah. And I think that was the biggest thing was just it was it was more of a check for me to kind of like go back and see what the previous actor did, the choices they made, how they kind of embodied who this guy was and what he did. And then I took that and I said, OK, I can sprinkle a little of that onto what I've already created, the work that I've done. And that way it's it's more it's easier for people to digest because it's, there's a little something there that's recognizable, but it's it's all new. You know, and I yeah. think that's what I did is I, I kind of created Zach the way I wanted him to be and then went back and looked and said, OK, I can I can kind of slot those smaller things in there and, and kind of get that part uh, that part done. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I think yeah. that's the that's that's kind of what helped me to to get this uh, character kind of like fleshed out in my own mind and to kind of get him in my body. 
Do you remember a moment on set or before you started shooting where you start, sort of embodied the character? Like you knew I've got him now. This is this is who I want. Yeah, and it was it was kind of I think it wasn't during rehearsals, but it was on our first day in the suits with the helmets on. And we were kind of going through it. And I just kind of realized that it wasn't, Hammond just felt, he felt a little too loose, right? And so a little thing that I did was I was just like, and and I do this with some characters if I feel that they have a certain personality type. And it's kind of, I don't know if this is like, if I can curse, but it's yeah, like yeah. having a rod. It's like having a rod up your ass, right? And that's what <laughs> they say. Like They say like people who are very like, they're type A and it's just like, they're just this. And I literally did that with my body with Hammond where it's just like, it's as if his ass cheeks are clenched and his posture is always perfect. And it really helped because when I did that, it immediately kind of changed the voice. It changed the rhythm of my voice and it changed kind of um, the intent of my voice. So now instead mm. of it just being like, you check your person, you check your file access, instead of it being something like that, suddenly he's up here and it's like, you track your file access. And it becomes something a little more official, something a little more, he's not the designated leader of this group, but he presents that way. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, there's there, in all of this chaos and in all of these things that are going on, there's this solid rod of a, of a, of a man, of a character in Hammond, where he's like under pressure, losing his crew, losing people. The issue more is going down. There's aliens, there's all kinds of shit going on. And he's steady. And he's trying to be steady and he's trying to be here and he's trying to tell people what to do and, and give Isaac the instructions that he needs. And, and all the meanwhile, trying to cover his ass and make sure that he's not the guy that's, you know, or, or um, being accused of, you know, being a traitor or whatever it is. So I think that really helps to kind of steady the, the, the game with all of this kind of chaos going on. And, to, and which makes it more remarkable when in the end, when he just fucking loses it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I really, like, oh man, even Hammond lost it. Like, that's it. It's over. You know. I really want to talk about that scene. Now, spoilers for anyone who hasn't finished a game or gotten to that mm -hmm. part. But the demise of Hammond is, is quite a, <laughs> you go out with a blaze of glory, man. And is oh, that, I loved can you it. tell me, is that, that's performance capture, that whole thing or, yeah. So that tell was me. a really, really fun day. Oh, you know, I can imagine. Set. It was a blast for me. And it was, and more so being a football player, like, or an ex-ball player, it, it was, uh, it was the physicality involved in it. So we had our stunt guy come in and he naturally had these big, you know, things and he's acting like the monster and, and doing this <laughs> thing. Yeah. And they put me in this in this kind of like this harness that went over my shoulders, like under my armpits, and like it was like two handles here, right? And so they put the the in, these big tall things so that way I knew where to look, uh, where the monster was. And when that part where the monster kind of like digs into Hammond and like jerks him around and like finally like yanks him, and then I have to kind of grab it by the throat and push it back. It, we did it like 15 times and it was just <laughs> awesome because I, and the guy initially, you know, and he was a smaller guy. He's about, he was like five, eight, you know, he was, he was like five, six, five, eight. I couldn't and have told, had to like I couldn't grab have me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he was like yanking me. Right. And so it was awesome because the first time he did it, he kind of grabbed and he was just like a little bit. I go, listen, I used to be 360 pounds. <laughs> You're going to have to move some weight today. Yeah. You know what I mean? I was, like, I was like, I don't weigh that anymore, but the, the mass is still there. I'm dense. Like, you got it. You got to yank me. And so I when he had that freedom, it was awesome because when they got to the part where it was like, dig in, he grabbed and it allowed me to like really play being yanked back, dropping the gun and like just kind of letting your body go as you're being taken uh, by this alien. You know what I mean? So we, yeah. we practiced that. I lost my voice that day because I was screaming so much. I was ah! doing this whole, you know, um, but it was a really fun moment to kind of get to be out of your mind a little bit and kind of improv and make up like these things that you're just kind of speaking to yourself because you're, you're losing it a little and you're replaying old scenes in your head of like, this is no way, there's no way this, why is it? And you're delusional. And you're and you you've kind of lost it. So that was a fun thing to play against because it had to be so steady and so you know with it the entire game. It was fun to finally lose my mind and to end it with this big physicality and and to take all that frustration from losing uh, uh, Chen and losing Johnston and, and and kind of having the 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 frustration with Daniels and and everything else and all this stuff going on and to finally just be like I'm gonna fucking kill this thing and <laughs> grabbing it by the neck 
and just being like, here we go. And we're just, this is how we're going to die. Then I'm taking you with me. And I think it just, it ended in this righteous, amazing, like just blaze of glory. Where it's just <laughs> It really was <laughs> an, an epic scene, wasn't it? And, and it was so is, fun. Yeah. Is Isaac Clark is going to write with you in that scene or how does his, yes, he is. Yeah. Gunner and I were, were together the entire time. Um, um, we basically, yeah, we were, we were there the entire time and we, and we kind of worked on it. And he, he's so giving as an actor. He always wants to be there to help. He always wants to be there for eye line and to kind of help deliver lines to you. So that way it feels as real as possible. And you can tell he's been in all these games. It means something to him and he cares about it. So that was so nice to come into as an actor, such a supportive and kind of like welcoming environment. Man. It sounds like you had a ball, man. It really does. I, I, I literally, I, every time they, they reach out, they're like, Anthony, thank you so much. I'm like, cool, 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 cool. When are we doing another one? Are we going to do another one of these? Because I really uh, enjoyed it. Yeah. I feel like they're working on an Iron Man game. So you got to sneak your way into that motive. Uh, I got to get into game. it. <laughs> I know. I got to get in, I got to get into these, these uh, bigger franchises because they are fun. They're a lot so, of fun, man. So what was the cast like? You mentioned Gunner Wright, but. There's quite a, a nice ensemble in this one that you work with. I, I know there's a few different scenes with uh, the different actors. How did you, did you meet them all on set? I'm guessing. Yeah, we all, so we, what we do usually before we uh, really start kind of getting into it is we, we do our table read day. So we all kind of zoom in um, and, and do it that way where, where we zoom in and we, and we find, sorry, my kids. <laughs> So like, you, you know how it goes. <laughs> uh, uh, where we all, where we all kind of, uh, where we kind of meet and we talk and we and we go through the lines and and just the director and the creative team, they kind of get with us and tell us like what the expectations are, what really happens in this scene. They kind of show us mock-ups of what they have, which is just super rudimentary, like just block figures kind of moving through a space and then the alien comes and then this happens. And they kind of just give us a timeline. So that way we understand like the feel of it and what's going on. And and then you also go through all the alts kind of in a script where it's like, if the player does this then this happens. And so we have to film out a different scene if the player chooses this or chooses that. So that's a big thing too, is they wanted a lot of player freedom in this to be able to kind of choose your your way through and to get a genuinely different response. And it's not just something that's like, we threw in a different word and now it's this. It's it's now a completely different path if you go that way. You know? Well, I always try to push the game like the scene where you're in the captain's quarters, you know, uh, and you're speaking with, with Isaac Clark, that nice exchange there, really great scene. Yeah. I uh, I sort of just stuck around and tried to annoy you. I was just sort of touching you. And there's a couple of <laughs> sort, of, sort of dialogue that I think people uh, might have missed as well. So I always try oh, yeah. stuff like that. I, you, I so I did all the scenes. To play around. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> play around in those. Yeah. Yeah. If anyone wants to watch your work, I mean, I've got a video up with all most of your scenes. I think it's all of them. I saw it. Yeah. And to be honest, I, I just put it on my Instagram because I loved it so much. Because yeah, my, my wife you, showed it to me and she was like, oh, my God, this is so amazing. And I was like, I, I just did a post this morning for the, the you know, the whole game and kind of just thanking everybody. And then in my uh, bio, I put a link to your videos uh, of Hammond. I was like, Thanks, if you guys want to see the best scenes from Hammond, just, you know, go to Dan <laughs> Allen's YouTube and it's there it is. So uh, you're, you're front and center. Buddy. Thank I'm you, done. brother. You, I no appreciate problem. that. Hey, I got some fan questions here that I might get to a few of them. Uh, first one's from Awesome HPT. What does it feel like, Anthony, to be stabbed by a necromorph and then blown up <laughs> by a singularity core? <laughs> numbing, pretty numbing. <laughs> no, it's uh, as as the character. I'm sure it was it was excruciating and painful, but as as the actor. Like I said before, it, it was it was one of the, if not the funnest day I had filming this game because it was just such a, it was so nice because we really delved into it. We didn't just do it in like one or two takes. And like, I was sweating after. I mean, it was, it was oh, like, yeah. I felt like I went through practice because it was just so physical and we were screaming and doing all kinds of stuff and just getting to kind of play. And even in the voiceover booth afterward, um, doing the VO for it, and getting the alternate kind of like lines of, of Hammond talking to himself and kind of losing his mind a little bit. That was so much fun uh, to do. So for me, that was 
probably my best day on set. And it's always great because at the end of it, they clap you off and they're like, you're gone. You're dead now. Uh. It's like, <laughs> like, this is so sad. And, you know, it's a sad. It's a lovely day, but it's such a sad day because it's like the last time you're going to see everybody if, if this is it. You know what I mean? Did you say so you knew about the death scene, I'm guessing, when you started this whole thing? Or? I didn't. I didn't know exactly when I was going to to die. Um, it came out finally, I think in like a third or fourth session, they were like, you you have like one or two sessions left. And I was like, wait, what? And I was like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <And laughs> come then, on. Yeah. I, know, I was like, no, come on, guys. And Rewrites. Then, uh, <laughs> yeah, right. But it was nice. It was they they let me know and, and how I went and then obviously like with voices and everything else. But it was you you have a couple of sessions of voiceover afterward. But it was just it was so nice to get the a, a really nice send off and then get to see everybody again during the voiceover process. But I, I love those guys. This is overall, including television and film, one of the best projects I've ever worked on. It was it was definitely a career highlight. That's amazing. I, I wanted to know yeah. what sort of direction they gave you for that particular scene did they say mm -hmm. look he is a bit he's getting a bit loopy here now's the time yeah. to sort of yeah daryl daryl is he's he's such a professional um and he's just so experienced in this space that he kind of knows what gamers are looking for and and he knows how to say kind of true to the vision of creative right mm -hmm. so with that we we i mean daryl gets in there and he's like he's in the trenches with you he's sitting there and he's just like and he'll call it out. He's just like, good, good. Now you're feeling this and you're, you know, this and that. And, and he's just watching, you know, and just like really into it. And I think we talked beforehand and he was like, listen, everything's kind of come to a head for you here. And mm -hmm. it's come to, and and I took it as the, the pot of boiling water has kind of bubbled over. And this structure that I had in my mind and put in place to stay calm and stay steady and be a leader, the dams have broke. And now it's all just kind of pouring out. So all the fear I had, all the anxiety that I had, all of, uh, you know, all of the, the, the issues that I had with the mission just come pouring out now. And so I think mm. that's, that was the freedom and the fun of being able to do this last scene was, was being able to kind of sit there and say, like, that's it. I have nothing to hold on to. I can lose posture. I can lose my voice. I can lose my mind. I can kind of just be like all over the place and manic and heavy breath. And but I think before we did, I almost passed out. But I think before every scene we did, I, I took 10 seconds to just like do this heavy, heavy breathing. So that way it's in your body that you're kind of loopy and you're a little off center and things are kind of not really, you know, jiving. And it yeah. helped. It helped with the performance. I you got to get some behind the scenes of this. I, I, I hope they've got something. EA mode. I know. I hope they were filming a little bit, so I hope there's some some BTS on this. I, I on on the on the uh, what I posted on the reel that I posted. There's a few pictures and some video of us all hanging oh, out in our in our motion nice. capture suits and with all the stuff. So that was fun, and I and I posted that, and I think you know people will get a kick out of that. But other than that, you're so busy, you just don't have time to sit there like try and record something. I, I never got a chance to. Like, I was like, I wish yeah. I got more, and I just didn't. And you want to be a professional. You don't want to be the guy with the... Yeah, you don't want to be the fanboy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, hey, real quick, selfie. You know? like, no, stop. <laughs> but to also touching on that, how he goes a bit loopy, you've also got to have... I feel like you struck the right balance between you don't want to go too far with it. Otherwise, it mm -hmm. doesn't look like it's not the same character. You still got to have... It's not. Do you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. And Darrow was he was pivotal to that because as an actor, obviously you want to feel all the feels, right? You're like, I want to go there. I want to do this. I want to do this whole thing. I want to, it's a dramatic breakdown. And he's like, cool, cool, cool. It took like 25% <laughs> of that. And I was like, all right, cool. And so, yeah. you know, he was able to kind of reel me in a little bit and, and, and structure it and, and form it uh, in a way that worked out very nicely that it was in adjustment to the character Yet you could see he is having a tough time and he is having a breakdown, but it stayed true to who Hammond is. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. Hammond's version of losing his mind. It's not just like anybody. Anybody, yeah. Yeah. Uh, question here from Nico. What was your favorite moment in Dead Space or from Dead Space and why? Um, well, obviously the death scene that we just talked about was a lot yep. of fun. Uh, I think my the one of my favorite moments was kind of our initial everybody on the bridge of the ship. Um, yeah, I loved that because I loved that we were all together. Everyone was alive. Uh, we we didn't have kind of the the alien presence yet, 
because we hadn't gotten gotten to that point. We just discovered the Ishimura and everything is there. And so for me that I loved that because it was just kind of us functioning in our roles. And it was just so nice to kind of like be on that ship and to be able to, you know, have my, my road rash with Daniels, but yet be able to talk to Isaac and, and Chen and Johnston. And it was nice to kind of have that. And that was our first day together. And we were all so excited. Yeah. Yeah. We were just so excited. And and so everybody was so welcoming that it was just such a nice intro to what the next few months would bring. And I think that was what really kind of excited everybody. And because it was so successful, that first shoot a few days, everybody was really excited to kind of get back and do it again and do it again and do it again. And it, and it never changed. Every time we met back up, it was as if it was yesterday that we worked and we were right with the chemistry. Um, yeah. This cast was fantastic. And it's all because they're all good people. Yeah. That's well, that's, that's a big part of it, isn't it? No um, yeah. egos and stuff like that. No egos. None. And if only the shit didn't hit the fans so quick and there was more scenes of you guys just, being a crew. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, it's like you just want to see this story of these guys flying through space and then it's just Star Trek. So <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you look at uh did you see the reviews on this game? Because I mean it's getting some astounding reviews across the board. Oh, that's awesome. I, I make yeah. it a point to never do that. Um, yeah, I was gonna I, I hear about it from like friends and stuff, right? Mm-mm. But I, I try not to, and the same thing with movies. I'm not one of those actors who's like, I don't watch myself. I'm like, yeah, I watch myself. I'm from football. Like, I study the film. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and <laughs> well, so you want to see what you I, did right and wrong. I, I always 100%. Thought, yeah. 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 And so I looked at the game clips. Um, I looked at a lot of, like, gameplay. Uh, a friend of mine was like, I'm playing as you right now. We FaceTime and he showed me, and it was awesome. Uh, and so that is kind of what I paid attention to. Uh, how critics received it and everything else, it's important, obviously, for EA. It's important for the game. It's important for for all that. But for me, it's over. So if you hated it or you loved it, I can't change it. And and the other side of that is, I, you know, a long time ago, someone told me that if you if you read your own press and you believe all the good stuff people say about you, like all the mm-hmm. really cool stuff, like, oh, he's an amazing actor and he's, he's this and he's that and, you know, the second coming of Denzel or whatever it is, right? you have to believe the bad stuff too. You can't just block that out. You're right. You can't just, you mm. can't just believe the good stuff people say, and then uh. on the comments, ignore the bad stuff. So for me, the, I just don't read any of it. That way it's like good yeah. or bad. I don't know. It's not really my, my deal. And, and that's a skill I learned from football. Cause you know, as a rookie in the yeah. NFL, oh, you start yeah. going down a Google rabbit hole and you're like, what do the people say about this in my game? And, and then you realize you're driving yourself crazy and you just stop. So I think that was the biggest thing is, is I learned, I took that from the NFL, never really believing or looking into the press, you know, just kind of yeah. stay with your job, stay steady. As long as you felt you did everything you need to do, then that's all it is. If they hate it, they hate it. If they love it, they love it. It's not really my problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good way to do it. I know, I know you've got kids. I don't know how old they are, but when are they're they going to like five and four? Okay. So they're not playing <laughs> this game anytime soon. <laughs> my son, my son yeah. just got freaked out because he watched Bat Wheels and it was, it had like a, a you know, ghost. Like he freaked out. Like, no, they're not playing this game. Uh, I'll never get any sleep. They'll wake me up all night. When, when they're 18, yeah, you might have a playthrough yeah. with them in yeah. 10 or so. It's like years. bringing out our old Nintendo. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, here you go. This is your father back in the day. I used to used to be somebody. No, this that'll be when you said this was my first game. Now I've done ten. You know, I know, right? That was that, that from your words. Yeah, exactly. I, I yes, please, I'll take it. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, no, they love it. DN, do you think they they will remake Dead Space Two? And if so, would you like to be a part of that game? I would, I, you know, I don't know what's going to happen because I died, you know, in this one. So I'm not sure what they would do with that. If they would either, you know, make me a new character or have me voice something else. Um, if they made it like a prequel or something, I mean, I'd love it, obviously. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I would hope to be called in for it. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously they have to stay true to the story and, and, and do all that. But uh, no question, I would I would work with these guys all the time if I could. Michael says, how many bloopers were there during the voice acting sessions? <laughs> and what was your favorite voice lines? Uh, so many. There were so <laughs> many. Uh, honestly, it, it's tough because there's so... Uh, you're, you're talking about technical things 
technology space and like security protocols. So there were so many lines that were just like complicated and, and had these like difficult words to string together. And so there were so many bloopers where we just kind of sound like we're like, well, I, that <laughs> <laughs> because you're just sitting there you're like the Ishimura has shut down security protocol calls for it, blah, blah, blah. And I got yeah. a key card and therefore, and then, so it's just this exposition <laughs> and you're going through it all and you, they got to get it in one take. And so you've been talking uh, for about 30 to 40 seconds. And then all of a sudden you fuck up that last line and you're like, no, <laughs> no. And so you got to start over all over again. So there was a lot uh, of that going on. Uh, but yeah, and, and at the end of the day, you're just worn out. You're worn out because there's just the dialogue that goes into it. I mean, the script is like, you know, the dialogue mm. that goes into it is is so dense and 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 you have to kind of be on it. And there's no, you can't, you got to be off book. It can't be anything like, oh, you're sitting there reading because it's your motion capture. So um, that was that was the thing that surprised me the most. You know, video games, I was expecting like, oh, okay, I'll have like a, a line or two here and there. And then I'll just like, you know, go in and act like I'm shooting something and it'll be easy. And then you get the script and you're like, holy shit. Like I have to, I have an entire page speech here. You know what I mean? And so yeah. that was the biggest thing. And then immediately it informed me that like, okay, you got to get serious. This is, you got to like dive into this the way you would a movie. And and that's just the way I treated it. I just treated it as if I'm prepping for a movie role and you know what scenes that you guys are going to do the next day. You kind of go over it. You make sure you got it down. They do a great job with rehearsals, and then we just kind of go. But all that being said, there were so many bloopers, and that's why I hope I hope they uh, they release that if they have it. I know one time I was I was running off of a ramp when Chen comes back, and an old football injury flared up. So I'm running down this ramp, and we're doing this thing, and then all of a sudden I'm just like, and I'm limping, I'm limping. One second, one second. I'll, and it was just ridiculous because I was like, great, I get hurt doing a video game. Didn't get hurt in the NFL, hurt during a video game. So yeah, uh, but it, it was so much fun. We, I mean, people fell like because you're you're tripping over. Now imagine, there's no, we're not working with a ship. You're working with basically right. an em, an em, an empty like airplane hangar that has. Yeah neon green tape on the floor that tells you like this is a corner so like look <laughs> around the corner and and so you forget where things are so people were tripping over boxes you know like things happen because you're just yeah. you're you have this imaginary world that's made up of you know basically c stands and and you and, get you get you know. fake sort of guns don't you fake weaponry yeah. Or, yeah, yeah yeah my my rifle must have weighed 35 pounds it was like some I don't know. Bob Vila <laughs> came out of retirement and just carved this thing out of solid oak. But that something was like there. It was the biggest gun. It was like the size of my thigh. I was just like, this thing is. They wanted to have, make it work. Oh my god! I was like holding it. And I remember we when we'd be uh, waiting between kind of takes or between scenes, and we we always sit there. And Chris and I, Chris Mutini, he who plays Chen, he he'd sit yeah. there. We're both holding our guns, and we're just like, okay, <laughs> Whew, okay. All right. And then you see like the handlers would come over and be like, we'll take those for We're like, thank God. Because <laughs> these things, I, and I was like, they couldn't, uh, this couldn't be made out of foam, like styrofoam. No, this. Uh, it they was, wanted you, it they wanted very, it to feel like the real well, deal. It felt, right? <laughs> it, felt, it definitely felt. Uh, no, it was good. I, I think what people might not realize is you probably have some of the most voice lines in the entire game, probably besides Kendra Daniels, Bridget. I, I reckon you're second to her. You might even have more than Isaac. Cl uh, Gunner yeah, Rock or yeah. up there. Yeah, definitely. I realized that second session. Because <laughs> I thought the first session we had, I was like, oh, okay, this is a lot. But like, I, I guess I'm fine. And yeah. then I, I looked at our second session. And I was like, oh. because they And they gave us more of the script. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking all throughout. Okay, got to get this down. You know? Yeah. And so the biggest fear that creeps in is stay consistent right like don't change mm. the voice like you got to stay consistent so before uh every session that we had i would go back and kind of like listen to myself and just make sure that i, I was in that pocket of what hammond sounded like because i didn't want it to be where you're listening to the game and like in the first half of the game hammond sounds like this in the second half all of a sudden it's like he loses the bass or he's like too bassy you yeah. know or, or whatever it is so uh that was tough but yeah, I, yeah I, I've, I, I talked I've had a lot I've had people on that have worked on a game for like five to six years and they might not work on the character for six months or whatever. And they have to hear themselves back just to get back into you the do. voice. So it's consistent, you, do. you know? Oh my God. Yeah. That was, the, that was the, the next thing with voiceover that just got me. Um, when I entered kind of this space was I would do an audition 
for a voiceover, you know, a game or something. And then like a month or two would go by. And then my agent would call and be like, you got it. And I was like, got what? What are, you, what are you talking about? <laughs> and she was like, yeah, the, you know, that one, this, this one game you did as, as this, you know, Egyptian God. And I was like, what? And then, and then I go back and I, and I search my Gmail and I'm like, oh, and I, and I click on my submitted audition and I was like, oh, that, oh, whoa, that one. like, oh, okay. Uh, and then, and, and in the audition, you might've done it a couple of different ways. You did it with a British accent or you just did it straight. And then you have to kind of ask in, in this awkward way and be like, what do they want? Like, which one are they trying to go for, you know? Yeah. And so it takes a lot. Like, voiceover is different in that way. You kind of remind yourself of, like, where you are, where, what they're looking for. James here wants to know, were the voice comm scenes motion capture? You know, the, the scenes where Isaac's looking at the, the little holograph of you, yeah. your character, are they motion capture or are they voiceover? Do you... Those are motion capture. Wow. It was... That was difficult. I remember that being a thing that we kind of, it was, we finally got the hang of it probably in like the third session. Um, but they really wanted that kind of like calm, you know, that, that uh, video calm to kind of like work. And so we tried to figure out different ways to do it. Finally, I think we, we did this thing. And the reason why I think I'm holding it most of the time is because the, the method we implemented is heavy. And basically it was, they got the cameraman to take oh. the camera and rest it on my forearm. Wow. And so they'd rest the camera here and he'd work with me and just kind of go with my movements and we'd practice. So I'd, I'd be here, it'd be on me. And then I'd move down and he'd just have to like guide the camera to move with me. And it would just be this thing where we're, it's like a dance. Wow. And so when it came time, I would be talking here and then I'd say, okay, Hammond out. And I'd drop my arm and he'd have to drop with me and go that way. And then if I brought it back up, he'd be, so after a few wow. different things that we tried, like that ended up being the one that worked the best. And so that's kind of what we went with. And, and, and is Gunner with. behind the camera or is he not in those? He, he, he's not in those scenes, but what no. they'll do is, and that's why I was saying Isaac, Isaac was awesome because if we talked to him through that, he would be on the other side of that cameraman and he would talk to me. He would. And so that yeah. was the, yeah. So that was the great thing about it. Is he really helped with that because I could actually hear in real time his responses as I'm sitting there looking at the camera and, and, and doing our thing. So the, you, you just have to have so much imagination and, and adaptability when it comes to video games because things are just on the fly. You know, you're just trying to figure out what's the best way to kind of have this play out in the game. And and the implementation of it is difficult. It, it's not, you know. That's fascinating. I've never heard of a process like that in a game before, where they've had the yeah. camera on you. Like that is really cool. It was really cool. Yeah. And we and we were like, well, let's see if we can do it. And Daryl, like I said, Daryl is just down for anything. He was just yeah, he was just yeah. so down because we were trying to figure out this whole thing and and like having the camera maybe on a stand and then just have like cut into it with my arm is up and then cut off when it goes down and it just didn't look right. It didn't look as they wanted a little bit of movement as if like it's on my arm and it just wasn't working. Yeah. And so we finally like, I was like, well, what if you just put it on my form? And they're like, well, if the camera's kind of heavy. And I was like, I'm the guy that can do it if you want. <laughs> so it worked out where we put it, they put it there and it, and it, and it looked really smooth and he liked the way it looked. And so the way it looked. And so we just went with it and, and it ended up being a really cool device that we used throughout the, um, throughout the game. See, I'm, I'm six, four. I don't know how uh, tall you are, but I'm six, four. Yeah, so. man. Guys, six, big, six. big boys. I feel you. We're, we're, we're useful, you know? Except for on planes. <laughs> we get screwed on planes. Oh, other than that. God. Yeah. <laughs> You're right on planes, yeah. Other yeah, than I that, didn't... we win. No. <laughs> other than that, yeah. Uh, Herbert, he says, how do you think Hammond and Chen first met, Anthony? Yeah, I didn't get the backstory, but the way I gave it uh, to justify my closeness to Chen was I just for myself what I did for the characters I, I just said that Chen had saved my life once and oh. that we had that we had that kind of special bond because uh, you know two missions ago when we had worked together you know he pulled me out of something and and, and truly saved my life and it, I love and that that's cool yeah. yeah well for me it was the only thing that could justify why I was holding on so tight to Chen being in this necromorph and being like no he can come back he can come back because I wanted to repay the favor of him you know saving my life and so for me like that's why that was the way i justified hammond's behavior toward necro chen you know yeah 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 no that's that's perfect uh yeah. 
Razor, has it crossed your mind that Kendra was jumping? Sorry, Kendra was jamming your rig signal because she was at the computer core and her job specialty would allow her to do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm guessing that that was what the director said as well. Oh, yeah. No, I don't trust Kendra. No. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, don't trust her at all no uh but yeah i'm I'm pretty sure of it uh you know as, as you can tell in the game she's she's just you know she's like that and so we were informed of that early on um i couldn't play to it obviously but um yeah, yeah i think you're pretty spot on uh with so you with- were you were informed where she, her character was going so how do you not subconsciously portray that in the scenes? Yeah, you know about- what i mean yeah, so I, you have to kind of realign yourself and say, like, my problem with, with Daniels is X, not what she does later on. And it's just kind of being in the moment in that scene right now. You know what I mean? And and the direct, and, and Daryl's good about that. He'll remind you and be like, you don't know any of this yet. All you know about her is that she's this. And And the way I was kind of trained to act, I always kind of assign a couple of words to people. It's a simple, easy mm. way for me to to kind of get into character and to have a point of view of them in the way that you react to them. For instance, like you, if you're talking to your dog, you're not going to talk to your dog in the same way that you talk to your wife. You know what I'm saying? And so you have a couple of words about your dog where it's like sweet, innocent. And then you have like a couple of words about your wife where it's just like beautiful, love. And so when you do those things, you're going to talk to your dog like this because he's sweet and he's innocent. You're going to talk to your wife like this because you love her and you want That's it. That's an and interesting so technique. Yeah. It's a, yeah, so it's it's a very easy way for me to kind of like just slot in a character and make sure that I'm relating to them on the right on the right level. And so I'm secretive, so I'm not going to give you any of those the two words that I have for my, <laughs> my castmates. But I had two words for Daniel and that made it Daniel's and that's what made it easy to kind of every time I addressed her, if she said something that was even seemingly innocent to someone else, Hammond took it another way because of the point of view that I have of her. You know what I mean? Mm. And so that that's what brings the richness and those little things that people are like, I don't know what it is, but I just like the way he like did that in that scene. Or, or I like the way that she kind of came back at him. And that's because of the point of view that you have of that person or how you feel about that character. Same thing with Isaac. Like I relate to Isaac differently than I relate to Chen or how I relate to Johnston or anybody else. You know, I love that. I've, uh, again, I've, you, you're teaching me new things today. I've had, I haven't, heard that, <laughs> haven't heard that technique either. I've had over a hundred guests. I mean, yeah, and that's that's a very interesting way of of doing it. Uh, another question yeah. here from Austin: Did you play the original, and have you played the remake? Uh, I haven't played the remake. They're, they actually, I just got a beautiful email from uh, Melissa over there at EA Motive, and she they're sending us copies of the game. So I will hopefully dust off that Xbox. And, Xbox, uh, PS5, what are we thinking? There you go. I don't know. Here's the thing. Now that I've been out of the game so long, literal, uh, I don't know what I, I'm like, should I get a new Xbox? Should I get a new PS5? I've heard PS5 is super powerful. I don't, you know, so I, I, I'm kind of stuck right now. I don't really know which one to go with. Yeah. Uh, so I, I I just told her Xbox because I have one now, but I figured it's a new game. I can go to GameStop, switch it, I can get a PS5, you know, yeah. something like that. So we'll nah. see. We'll see how that works out. But I haven't. I mean, I haven't they're both one. pretty much the same, man. In terms of power, Xbox and P. It's just that's weird. what I figured. Yeah. Yeah. You know I always like. I you know, big guy, big hands. I always went with the Xbox because it was a bigger yeah. controller and it just felt more natural in my hands. But yeah, you know. Yeah. It's a it's a different thing. That as far as the original, I I, I did play the original back in the day. I didn't play a lot of the sequels. I just played like the original one because I just I thought it was so dope that whole spinal light up and like the, the helmet and everything else. Um, so that was like that was my shit. Like the original game was 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 OG Dead Space was like my my jam. But after that, uh, I didn't gotta get into the sequels or anything. So I don't really I'm not well versed in like what happens later. Um, yeah, but I definitely played the original for sure. Is there another gaming franchise you'd like to be a part of that you can think of? <gasps> I mean, take your pick, Halo. <laughs> Halo, yeah. I, and and yeah, funny yeah. enough, I actually auditioned for that Halo live action. Wow. Uh, yeah. That went to Paramount. Space, the yeah. Guy that's, yeah, the guy that went to. Oh yeah, that one. That I was talking about the one the. <sighs> Is that what you mean? The live was, action series. No, and yeah, that's the one for Paramount. I was talking about the one that that they had before, where it was the kids that were in kind of that like academy. And then Master Chief was there. It was like a whole different, it was like a different kind of thing. It was, 
It, was oh, it wasn't Porter. a game. It was an animation or something. No, 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 it was it was live action, but it was like a different. Oh, okay. I forgot um, what it was. It was like it was with Michael Colt. I think that's who it is. Who's my? It was the guy who played Luke Cage, right? Is it Landfall? Nightfall? No? That might have been it. Nightfall. That's it. Nightfall. I think that's what it was. Yes, it was Nightfall. So that one, I had, I had actually auditioned for that. Oh, for that career, role, right? For that role. Wow. And he he ended up getting. He beats me on a lot of stuff. So except that this one. Uh, but, <laughs> no, motherfucker. No. But but he uh, uh, you know he he did a great job in that and and I was so into kind of that whole thing. But Halo is one that I've loved since college uh, when we had those original land parties. Um, yeah, man, I love that. Uh, God of War. Oh would be yeah, one that's just super dope. I would love God of War would be amazing. Yeah. Uh, so what what was the one I liked? It was the Dante. And he had the guns, two guns, and the Devil May sword. Cry. Devil May Cry. God, I love that game. That game was so dope. I thought nice. I loved that. Game. Nice. So that, and then obviously Call of Duty. Like Call of Duty is just yeah. Any, anybody wants to kind of be in that one. It's a nice little yeah. drop. But yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but yeah, those you know naturally those those are the games that I kind of gravitated toward. Um, I loved uh, what is it Dante Uncharted. I loved Uncharted. I, I played oh, those. My favorite those are all series. Games. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um, You're picking some, good and... picking some good stuff here. Yeah. I know. I mean, you know, it's good. They're, it's it's all gaming. It's, it's I had, I think I had, you know, original Nintendo, Nintendo, uh, or NES 64, N64, uh, Super Nintendo. I didn't have a GameCube, but I, I played the GameCube a lot because my buddies had it. Uh, so you grew up, you just then... grew up around it all. Years, ton of yeah. it. I, I I think I even had an Atari Jaguar at one point. Remember the old <laughs> like the Atari's attempt oh, to make wow. a game console. Yeah, yeah with Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah. So I was I was definitely a gamer for the longest time and I've I've unfortunately I left Neverland and had to grow up <laughs> and get a mortgage. So. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I know you love you love cooking and golf as well, uh on the side. Um what's your handicap, man? I need to know. Currently, because I, I just had a terrible round, uh, 11. I'm 11. I'm 11. 11. That's not bad. Yeah. That's pretty I've good. I've gotten I'm... as low as, as like not, I, I like touched nine for like two days and then, <laughs> and then it went man. right back to like, 11. I, I can't get to single digits either, man. I, 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 say, I it's just, it's, it's so, so hard. hard. It is so hard. You, just, but... you have to like string together so many good rounds mm. to like get there, you know? It's tough. I, I what about around. you? 13, six, 14. six foot four. Yeah, I was gonna say six foot four. For yeah. you to be a third and fourth, that's pretty good. Guys, big guys like us are usually <laughs> terrible. Like, like twenty two is the handicap. Yeah, I yeah, I I picked up a few tips because I used to work for golf in Australia here. So okay. I, I hang around a lot of professionals, but still I'm not even in single digits. So that's probably even worse. Yeah. But well, we'll get, we'll get there eventually, like, you know. Right. Right. Over time. I, I yeah. mean, as long Always as I learning. Did it before yeah, before I'm like AARP age, then I'll be all right. You know, I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's one of those things. I remember my trainer when I was with the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, my trainer said uh, he liked to golf, and I was like, "Oh," and, and I go, "Why don't you know you golf more or get better?" And he goes, "Well, if I was a good golfer, I wouldn't be a good trainer." And I was like, <laughs> "Good point. Never like mind. That. Yeah. Good, good point. Yeah, you're right. You're right." So okay. I always take that whenever I haven't played in a while. I'm like, I wouldn't be a very good actor if all I did was golf. So, you know. <laughs> and cooking what's your favorite dish if i'm um, oh what, what's your go-to so just to caveat this i'm half puerto rican half nigerian so a lot of flavor yeah, wow a lot of food a lot of like bold flavors so i'm and right now i'm a pescatarian so my father the first time i told him that he was just like so you don't eat meat and i was like no he's like okay i'll make you good and i was like no 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 I, no, no meat <laughs> Nothing whatsoever. Sausage. Nope. Not sausage either. So uh, I had to kind of rethink the way that I cook and kind of throw in different things. I still make like uh, arroz con gandules, uh, which is a Puerto Rican dish, which is like a yellow rice that has like um, these kind of, it's almost like chickpeas in them yeah. or not chickpeas, uh, black eyed peas, almost what they call, Puerto Ricans call them gandules. And so I do that with shrimp. And so it kind of makes it nice. I also make this amazing coconut milk uh thai rice 
that has that it, it calls for cod. I do it with sea bass because sea bass is fattier and it has a, just such a richer flavor. You know wow. what I mean? Um, so that's beautiful. a good one. Oh man, I, my kids eat like I, I always laugh because I'm like my kids eat like they're at a five star restaurant because I like to cook, and so I make man. them like the in laws come over and they're like Jesus, like what is what is this? You know what I mean? <laughs> and it's just it. I enjoy doing it. For me, it's cathartic. It's a very kind of it's a time where I can listen to music and just cook and maybe yeah. you know drink a glass of wine while I'm making things and doing all kinds of stuff. So my kids really enjoy uh, the cooking. My wife loves it because I, I cook and clean in the kitchen, which makes it nice because I'm just particular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bit OCD. So, yeah, yeah, I'm a little OCD with like where things are. Um, yeah, but yeah, so I, it, cooking has always been a, a big a big passion for me because I think it was just. I love the creativity. I love um, food. You know, I, yeah. was, I miss being super fat. I really do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I miss it. I miss it so much. Uh, but you know, it, it's just it, it's one of those things that I enjoyed being an offensive lineman. I, I ate my ass off. Did so. you did you lose a lot of that weight from from cutting out meat, or was it just a lot of um, training? Or- uh, so it had to go in stages. I was three sixty when I played. I'm currently like probably 260 265 uh i haven't worked i haven't worked in a minute so i'm probably like 268 um (laughs) but but with uh but with that you know it was it was like in stages so the first thing was like no fried food yeah um no sodas or juices just like water keep it pure and then and then this was a funny one that everybody laughs at where when i i told myself when you go to a restaurant you eat what they give you you don't ask for more. You don't ask for like, can I get an extra piece of chicken on that? Can you yeah, add three yeah. more pieces of shrimp? You know, so it, it was it was one of those things of learning to enjoy the portions you're given and be done with it and be full. And once that happened, that was great. So I dropped down. And I think being a, a, a vegetarian slash like pescatarian, sometimes it helps to kind of just keep me at 265 or, or you know, keep that level uh, uh, of weight down. So I think that's the, that's the biggest thing because I love cheese and that's a big issue for me. I just can't. Oh, let it go. me too, man. I can't, can't, let, it go. can't let it go. I no, can't. We'll I need to though, but I know. I but can't. it's like <laughs> it, it, it's almost as if someone's like, "Stop eating cheese. You'll live another two years." And then I'm just like, "What's two years without cheese? <laughs> <laughs> it's not worth yeah. it." Uh, yeah. No, yeah. I mean, currently in our in our refrigerator are like three pounds of like deli sliced cheese. Everything from like smoked gouda to a sharp. Cheddar's like a hubbard oh, dill. Like shit. I just, I'd be in trouble I'm at your house. Oh my God, <laughs> and all throughout the day, it's just like just housing like pieces of cheese on oh. set. Let me say it's so bad that on set on on the set of Family Reunion, they knew not to put cheese trays out. So I would come in and get my lunch oh or my, my dinner, God. and then I'd go to my trailer, <laughs> and then they put the cheese tray out because I would literally. I think once I actually just grabbed the cheese tray and I was like taking this to my trailer, and I just like I, I wanted it. I housed it. It was all it was all cheddar. It was amazing. <laughs> oh, I am man, a cheese so good. It's, that it's is crazy. so good. Yeah. Hey man, thank you for taking the time tonight, man. It's been a real pleasure. I, I really yeah, appreciate no. you taking the time, man. No, thank um, you for having me. Honestly, really fun interview. Had a great time. I wanted to know before I let you go, what yeah, what would you say your most important failure was in your career that's uh that you've learned from? Failure as far as like an actor? Yeah, or even in life in general or whatever you, whatever comes to mind, I guess. The biggest failure I I'll say it's a couple. Like so when I when I came out of high school, I went to the Naval Academy. And I remember I went to the Naval Academy on a, on a football scholarship. I got there. I didn't like it. And I remember the coach at the time was like, you're just not good enough. And you'll never really play in college And he said that to you face to, to face. Future. And I, I think there was a little wow. bit of bitterness because he knew I didn't want to be there. And I didn't like the Naval Academy. And I was already trying to leave. And they were just like, everyone who is left here ends up being a failure or ends up kind of working at McDonald's or doing whatever. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but just the fact that like, you just don't really achieve anything. You don't really go on to um, bigger things if you leave the Naval Academy. Mm. And I just remember that when, before I left to, as punishment, before I was discharged, it was this thing of where they had me kind of work as a janitor 
And I was on my hands and knees with like a toothbrush and cleaning, you know, the bathrooms and like doing all that. And all my classmates kind of going by in, in, a, in a line and they look over and they see me kind of just like emptying trash and doing those things. And I remember <clears throat> saying to myself, this is, this is that part. This is the part where you ignite yourself and you become everything that they said you couldn't. And I took that and I took that as motivation to go and walk on at TCU and to kind of change the game and earn a scholarship and change positions from defense, offensive line, and eventually become, you know, an all conference player, you know, all American type player and, and get drafted and, and play in the NFL because I just wanted to prove them wrong. And I think that was the a failure as far as staying at the Naval Academy that really sparked something different. And it was a pivot. And I always believe that I'm a big believer in, Whatever direction you're going in, go a thousand miles an hour in that direction, but don't get tied to it. Because if the winds change and it's more efficient to take a fucking right turn and to change direction and you got to go somewhere else, then do it. Because that's what is required. You don't do what you feel like doing. You do what's required to get where you want to go. And that for me mm -hmm. was the biggest thing. And so anytime I have a failure, I reevaluate and I say, okay, is this a thing that I need to kind of go back to the drawing board and try again? And I try to see what I learned from it. And if it's something where I have to pivot, then I have no ego about it. And I have to, I have to pivot and then you move on and you do something else or you, or you kind of pivot in that same industry, but you pivot to something else or you do something else. You have to do that or you get stuck. And I think the people that get left behind and the people that end up forgotten are the ones that stayed just kind of stubborn and hard headed that they didn't want to change. And they wanted, this is the way it is. And this is the way it's always going to be. And that's just not, that's just mm -hmm. not the way life works. Thank you for sharing that, man. Really yeah, great no story. Problem. Hey, is Thank there you. anything you wanted to say to the fans before I let you go? The Dead Space fans or anyone, family reunion fans? Yeah. Uh, all your projects. Honestly, uh, I just want to say thank you to everybody who's bought the game, who's played the game, who's talked about it. Um, and thanks to the cast and crew over at EA. Uh, I had such a blast making this game. I'm so glad that everybody's enjoying it. And please continue to buy it. Uh, please continue to play it and post about it. And, uh, please feel free to message me or, or send me clips if something cool in the game happens or there's a, like a weird glitch where I'm like dancing. It, it's always fun. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we enjoy making it. And you're over on Instagram. Yeah. Anywhere else yep. we can find you. Uh, I'm on Instagram. I'm on Twitter uh, yeah. at Anthony Alabi on Twitter at Anthony Alabi official uh, on Instagram. And that's it. I'm, I'm kind of, I keep it simple on, that's on it. socials. Yeah. I don't, I don't go nuts on, on the social nah. media. That's it's just, it's a fun thing, but uh, yeah, that's where you can find me. Beautiful, man. Thank you so much. Is there anything uh, Zach Hammond can say to Dan before I let you go? Is that possible? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's see. Um, uh, <clears throat> here we go. Dan, I really like your show. I enjoy it. Thank you for having me on. Now I have to make sure I investigate this thing going on, so I have to leave you now. But hopefully, you'll be safe. <laughs> Sorry, man. I, uh, it's I, had to, I had to laugh. Yeah, no. Thank you, man. That's, that why they, that's, why they, that's why they give us the scripts. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Um, I look you, forward man. to that's chatting great. again when you're in, a, in uh, Call of Duty or in a big Halo great. game. We'll put it into the air. Yeah, put it in the ether. All right, buddy. Have a good one. Take Thank care, you so man. Much. Take care.